What if I told you that two people could work the same job for the same wage and after 40 years one person will still be living close to the breadline with almost no savings while the other person could have hoarded hundreds of thousands of pounds to either spend lavishly or save for retirement? To understand how this is possible, it's important that we understand the three main factors affecting your bank balance, or for the sake of the video, your net worth. These three factors are income, which increases your net worth, expenses, which decreases your net worth, and money management, which is what you do with the money that you already have. And if you're wondering what I mean by do something with the money that you already have, what I mean is if all of your money is in a current account with a bank, and it's getting less than 1% interest, and if you don't know your interest, then it probably is less than 1%, then you're missing out on potentially a lot of free money, which in the long term, over multiple decades, can add up and compound into hundreds of thousands of pounds or dollars. Now remember that word compound because it's essential to understand how this works. So first of all, it's obvious that income is the biggest factor that's going to affect your net worth over the long term. If you're making £5,000 per month and I'm only making £2,000 per month, then undoubtedly you're going to have a lot more money than me in 40 years time. But sadly, income is also the hardest of the three factors to change because basically it's very hard to convince someone to give you more money. Expenses is easier to change than income. If you cut back a bit on drinks, smokes, gambling, shopping, then each month you might be able to save one or two more hundred pounds than usual. However, money management is the factor that most people either forget about or were never taught and is actually the easiest of the three factors to change once you know how. I personally started learning about these methods from YouTube and then after bringing these topics up in conversation with my dad, he taught me everything he knew about savings accounts and ISAs. So to show you exactly how powerful a properly applied money management strategy can be, I want you to look at two examples. Kevin works at the supermarket, doesn't make a lot of money, wishes he could make more money. He knows he needs to start saving money for later in life because he knows the government pensions are not very good. Kevin's already cut down on his expenses by drinking less and eating less takeaways. And so Kevin is able to put away £250 per month into his bank account, which he thinks is the best place for the money to be. And he's able to do this consistently between the ages of 25 to 65, so for 40 years. Here's what his net worth will look like by the time he's 65. So as you can see, Kevin's monthly deposits have really added up and after 40 years, Kevin saved up to £120,000, which is a really nice respectable amount. As a side note, it's key to remember that over time, this £120,000 won't be able to buy Kevin as much as it can today due to inflation. However, to play devil's advocate, as inflation increases, so will his pay. Therefore, Kevin's monthly deposits will also likely increase over the 40 year time span. And so for the sake of simplicity, we won't take inflation inflation into account for this example. Example B, Chad. Chad also works at the supermarket, doesn't make a lot of money, hates his job. Chad also cut down on his expenses and started putting away money, not because he's scared of how bad the government pension is going to be, but because Chad heard about money management strategies and learned about the magic effects of compound growth. Chad is able to save £250 just like Kevin. However, Chad spreads his deposits, spreads his savings between savings accounts with popular banks, ISAs, also available with popular banks, and he also invests some of his money into large stable companies that pay dividends between 4 to 6%. On average, Chad's money invested into these different strategies returns 5% per year. And just like Kevin, he continues paying £250 every month from the ages of 25 to 65. This is what Chad's net worth will look like after 40 years. As you can see, Chad's final net worth is over three times higher than Kevin's. And to be clear, Chad didn't do any extra shifts, didn't do any sexual favours. He simply spread his deposits between savings accounts, ISAs and long-term safe dividend stocks. None of this was magic. None of it needed professional financial advice. Chad simply took advantage of the exponential effects of compound growth. And sadly, not enough people understand how this works and so they retire or reach later life with a lot less money than they could have. Albert Einstein is famously quoted as saying compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. To put it simply, 
Compound interest refers to the principle that when you save money, as well as earning interest on the savings, you also earn interest on the interest itself. Therefore, every year that the money is in your account, you're earning interest on each previous year's interest. This means that not only are your savings going to grow over time, but that the rate at which they grow gets faster year by year. One super key thing to understand from this explanation is the effect of time on this process. The longer you allow compound growth to do its work, the greater the rewards will be. To understand just how important time is in reaping the rewards of compound growth, consider this. If you saved £500 per month with an average annual return of 5% and you did this for 40 years from the age of 25, when you turn 65, thanks to compound growth, you'd now have £744,000 after only depositing £240,000. If you were to start saving late at 45 years old and try to catch up on the missed years of compound growth by saving £1,000 per month, twice as much as the previous example, and you did this until 65, even though you would have deposited £240,000, just like the previous example, you'd only end up with a net worth of £407,000. So both examples deposited the same amount of money, and the only difference as to why the first example had almost twice the money of the second example was time. And that right there is the magical effect of compound growth. Okay, so you want to get started saving money properly using a sound money management strategy. In my amateur opinion, a sound money management strategy is one that makes use of various methods. And I want to list these methods to you and explain their potential yearly returns, but also give each method a risk factor. First of all, savings accounts offer around 3% yearly returns, and I'd give them a risk factor of zero out of 10, due to the fact that your money is safely held within a bank. If you want to withdraw your money, you can do so, and there's really no risk that comes with savings accounts. Secondly, are ISAs, or individual savings accounts, which offer at least 4% yearly returns, and I'd give them a risk factor of one out of 10. This is because whilst the money held within an ISA is completely safe, some ISA accounts don't allow the money deposited to be withdrawn until a set date, often referred to as the maturation date. And so there's a risk that you need access to the money that you've got locked away in an ISA due to an unforeseen circumstance. To avoid this risk, when saving using ISAs, be sure never to put all of your savings in an ISA and keep a set amount of money available in savings accounts or your current accounts. And last of all, long-term dividend stocks held within large, reliable companies that are household names can on average return four to six percent each year. And I'd give them a risk factor of two out of 10. There is an inherent risk that comes with holding stocks due to the unpredictable nature of the stock market. However, these risks are diminished when one invests sensibly into large large companies with proven track records. Furthermore, if you diversify your investments across multiple stocks, you further decrease your risk exposure. On top of that, the longer you plan to hold your stocks, the better, because you'll have the patience to weather the storms of periods of economic uncertainty, as you'll be in no rush to cash out. The stock market on average returns 6 to 7% each year, and so by investing into the stock market sensibly for the long term, not the short term, all you need to happen is for the stock market to continue what it's been doing for at least the past 50 years. The last point I want to add about stocks is that if you're completely lost when it comes to this topic and you don't want the responsibility of picking the right stocks, I highly recommend you research ETFs that track either the US economy or the global economy or even the UK economy. ETFs are similar to index funds in the respect that they basically allow you to invest in a basket of stocks and they take the responsibility of picking the stocks off of your shoulders. By combining all of these methods and spreading your monthly savings across savings accounts, ISAs and long-term stock holdings, you'll be able to achieve at least 4-5% to yearly returns based on how much money you place into each method. I'd personally recommend a three-way split between all three methods. However, it's important that you set yourself a safety net of money which you keep available in your normal bank account. For me, I keep around three to 4K always available in my current account and any money over this limit gets split between the three methods I've just described. If you're currently sat on over 5K in your normal bank account getting no interest, then by now you should have started investing and utilizing compound growth yesterday, last week, last year. So if you haven't already, begin managing your money properly and be a Chad later in life, not a Kevin. 
No offense to any Kevins watching the video. If you've enjoyed watching the video and found it helpful, please be sure to let me know. A lot of work went into making this video and I really do appreciate and value interacting with my audience. Thank you. Chad simply took advantage of the exponential, ex exponential.